leading out Tipperary, the All-Ireland champions, accorded a warm and generous welcome by the Limerick players and by the fans here at the Gaelic ground, even though this Tipperary team this afternoon is much altered since last month. But we'll start with the team playing at home this afternoon, and essentially Limerick's new selection committee relies upon the same squad that competed in this year's championship. But there are a couple of changes in defence by comparison with the back line that looked highly porous against Tip in June. The alterations are on the left side with Anthony O'Riordan in the corner and Andy Garvey on the wing. Up front, Pat Davlin plays at right hand. Reserve strength as they're minus no fewer than nine of their champions. Format two matches before Christmas and of course three then in the springtime before the semi-finals and final itself. Mike Houlihan driving it forward for Limerick who play from left to right in the first half. Shane Fitzgibbon trying to engineer the opening score here. On a very still afternoon, scarcely a puff of breeze about. Ken Hogan, the goalkeeper, defiantly driving it into the centre of the field. Paul Rick Horan there with Conor Stakelham. Whipped forward by Mike uh, Houlihan again. Picked up on this near side and driven high and put over the bar. A nice point there by Mike Galligan. So Limerick take the lead and uh, a club man of yours, Eamon Cregan, joining me this afternoon, the scorer there. Yes, indeed, Michael Galligan picked up the ball, took a quick look and put it over the bar. Very good score from Limerick. Declan Ryan battling in the centre there with Joe O'Connor of Bally Brown, new Limerick team captain, of course. Andy Garvey trying to feed it out of trouble there, and the ball is touched on the ground, scooped up there by Joe O'Connor into his hand, so it's going to be a free to Tipperary. Connor Stakelham taking over from Michael Cleary. Injured and not able to play in this match, and he's put the sides level. Well struck point by Connor Stakelham, selected at corner forward, but operating at left half forward. Well, Eamon, the last time I can recall as depleted a Limerick or a Tipperary team was uh, in a league match against Galway a couple of years ago. It really is putting it up to Limerick, and uh, surely if they can't beat this, what is a largely a scratch Tipperary side, they haven't much chance of beating the full side in, in a championship meeting. Well, that's true. Uh, Tipperary are very, are very short, short-handed. Uh, they were short six before the match started, and they're short another three now. And it's Limerick will have to win this match well if, they, if they're going to hope and one and do well in the league. It's Stakelham again looking for another score to put them over and put them level, put them ahead, I should say. Connor Stakelham second point, and so they go ahead by two points to one. Tommy Quaid here commencing his 17th season as Limerick's number one goalie. Up towards Mike Galligan again. Knocking it forward towards Shane Fitzgibbon, and he's put it over the bar instead. A lovely point. Sides level. Galligan with two points to his credit. Phil Bennis was saying to me during the week that this is a match which would tell him quite a bit about the players he now has at his disposal as they plan their strategy for the full league campaign. That's Podrick Holren. Towards Connor Stakelin. Mike Hooligan trying to keep him away. It's Declan Ryan. On towards Aiden Ryan. The referee allows an advantage. Aiden Ryan trying to whip it in. Tommy Quaid coming from his goal, beaten for it. It comes down. And eventually it's uh, Brian Finn who struggles to take the ball clear. Under pressure, indeed, fouled by Donny O'Connell. And that's going to be a free out for Limerick. Yes, the referee gave advantage there. Um, a high tackle on Declan Ryan. And unfortunately for Tipperary, Tipperary didn't utilize that advantage. A good, good interception by Brian Finn. Finn, the free taker. Mike Rell trying to stop the progress there of John Madden. Podrick Hogan again. So many of these, Sean Nealon here, have come from the junior panel and striving to make names for themselves and seek out permanent positions in the full Tipperary team as we watch Pat Fox, man of the match at the All Ireland final, whip it in his left hand side and he's put it over the bar. And it's three points to two. Lovely catch by Anthony Carmody at midfield. On to Pat Dabron. One of the stars of the county final, and he's put it over the bar and tied it up again at a three point each game. Pat Dabron, who's scored and hit seven points in all for uh, Bally Brown in the recent county final here in Limerick. So still three points apiece, and in the 11th minute of the first half. Joe O'Connor having quite a battle there with Declan Ryan. Strong performers. Pat Fox, 
scooped away. Back into the centre by Ned Ryan, stopped by Anthony Carmody for Limerick, blocked down by Aidan Ryan. So good at going forward. Declan Ryan now, a strong player, outside to Pat Fox. Attempts to block him down. Not yielding, and he did open as Aidan Ryan trying to go through, stopped, and it's Andy Garvey in the end who whips it out of defence towards Pat Davern. Challenging here with Paul Delaney. Comes back to Seamus O'Shea from the Sarsfields Club in Tipperary. Across to Pat Fox, beautiful catch. Referee says, play on. Beats Brian Finn instantly. And he's put it over the bar. And there in an instance, you have the genius of Pat Fox. A marvellous catch, advancing quickly, easily beating Brian Finn. And an expert finish. It's 4-3. To the centre. Ned Ryan beaten. Now Kieran Carey, trying to go by Seamus O'Shea. Seamus O'Shea in there instead of Bobby Ryan this afternoon. Did well. Up to Podrick Hogan. Cross towards uh, Fox's wing. He was being pushed by Brian Finn. Fox once again turning in a very good afternoon's performance. Stegelham, who did such a good job when coming in for Nicky English in the All-Ireland series, has turned possession into a score of five points to three now. And Conor Stegelham has got himself yet another score. That's three and all. Midfield exchanges have been dominated by Tipperary. That was uh, going off the referee's back, and I'm sure he'll have to throw the ball in. Anthony Carmody and Podrick Hogan, won by Carmody, onto Kieran Carey, still operating from the centre forward position outside to Pat Davron. Limerick needing a score now to keep well in touch. Inside towards Shane Fitzgibbon, who's been sucked into the centre. Donny Keeley there standing his ground. The referee saw some pushing from behind, and Pat Horan from Offaly awarding the free in, and this can cut the lead down now to the bare minimum. As you said, Ger, uh, Limerick are not dominating centre field and their half-forward line are not moving either, so therefore the full forward line is being starved of decent possession. And because of that, the, the Shane Fitzgibbon and Ger Hegarty are inclined to come out. And that's the first score for a member from the full forward. That's Gary Kirby from the free. That's one in the centre there by Mike Rail. On towards Mike Gallagher. Up towards Shane Fitzgibbon, neat catch by Fitzgibbon, getting there ahead of uh, Donny Keeley again and putting it over the bar. And the sides are now level, Liberic with the last two scores, that's a point now, first of the match for the man from Adair. Yes indeed, and it was a good block down by Mike Rail, on to Michael Gallagher, who hit in a beautiful ball. Shane got it first time, turned and put it over the bar, and that's the way they should be hitting the ball into the forward line. Well, aside from Tommy Gray, Shane Fitzgibbon is uh, the most experienced member of this Limerick team this afternoon. Limerick side largely built on the All-Ireland winning minor team back in 84, centenary year. They later went on to win under 21 honours under Phil Bennis as well in 87, so they're hoping for the full progression perhaps in 92. Some holding, and this time it's going to be a Limerick free out. One thing there, Brian Finn has gone to right corner back and Anthony Reardon has gone to left corner back to match Pat, Pat Fox. Free taker once again, Andy Garvey. It's a huge free, well up towards Shane Fitzgibbon's corner. Caught brilliantly inside towards Jerry Hickard, he's slightly overhit. Can he get a stick onto it? He can, stopped on the goal line. And a way out of the danger area by Michael Ryan, and it's eventually put over the bar, despite the good works of Mick Ryan, put over by Mick Galligan from Clahorn, his third point of the day. And as you see, Limerick have gone into the lead. Well, it was a very good goal line save here, Eamon. Yes, indeed, for the goal line, good save, it was blocked, cleared out, Shane Fitzgibbon just missed it, Michael Galligan got it, and from 14, 15 yards out, he flicked the ball over, great score, and that's his third point, as you say. Roderick Hogan. So Tip, who were leading by two points, have now surrendered the lead, and it's going to be interesting to see whether or not they can catch up with Limerick once again. Fox. One player, it seems, that uh, Limerick, in defence, really have to fear. Yes, indeed, he's a, he is a tremendous player, and Anthony Reardon must be very close. He gets the ball on his left, and then he goes in right. And uh, once he puts that shoulder down, it's very difficult to stop him from going through, so one must stand just in front of him and try to harass him.
beautifully fed in by John Madden to Donny O'Connell and O'Connell has put it over the bar well the umpire considered it seemed to be signalling it wide initially and then went for the white flag so they level again Pat Darren on the heavy ground not making a lot of headway Mike Galligan coming across pursued by Seamus O'Shea whipped in by Pat Darren again that's no Sheehy doing his best to try and take it away from Ger Hegarty who gets the measure of him he's fouled and it's going to be a free in 22 metres out straight in front of the post should be easy and indeed it is by Anthony Carmody Declan Ryan pursuing trying to hook him did well it's a hefty shoulder mind you Shane Fitzgibbon the player is on the ground injuring himself as he made that shoulder on uh, Declan Ryan here how to take a shoulder Declan Ryan coming in here on Shane Fitzgibbon who in fact doesn't present his shoulder to uh, Declan Ryan now in the follow-up play we see Anthony Carmody trying to break his way through here and this is where the foul eventually uh, came there the challenge on Ryan on the uh, Carmody and as we watch that the free was taken and converted and Park Carey there linking up with Joe O'Connor up towards Kieran Carey John Madden uh, a push and it's going forward full of determination in towards Donny O'Connell went off the hand that time of Park Carey injured in the process may have been struck on the hand Fox standing his ground intercepted momentarily there by Anthony O'Reardon uh, that's Sean Nealon fouled and a free in from the 20 metre line I think the foul there was for the hand on the back as he went in one handed to block it. Again, an interception by Pat Fox just shows you how sharp he is. Brian Finn hand passed the ball and was intercepted by Fox. So more target practice for Connor Stegler. Remember his side trailing by three points. Now just two between them. The finger yesterday while playing for Nina in the quarterfinal of the Tipperary Championships, a match which they lost. Park Harry. He will come back here. And that's whipped out in the end by Brian Finn. Only as far as Aidan Ryan, who started all of that. This time a much lengthier delivery into the centre. Stopped by Tommy Quaid. Brian Finn's available. A poor clearance from Finn, however, putting his own defence well under pressure again. Joe Connor. The captain they're hoping will inspire them to success during the 91-92 league season into Sean Nealon of Tipperary. Comes off power Ryan's behind. Still, <laughs> well, it's a 65 now. If you can't use the stick, if you can't use the hurley, there are other parts of your anatomy that are equally of use. It was well covered by Pat Carey, I must say, and uh, fortunately it did hit his, um, whatever you call it. <laughs> but uh, Michael Houlihan is down injured here on the left-hand side. So Tommy Quaid poised as we head in towards injury time. Connor Stakel, the taker of the 65. This is the third in the first half, and he's put it over the bar. At the end of the first half, which has seen Tipperary come back. Now just trailing by a point. Conor Stakelham trying to keep the pressure up on the Limerick back line. Looking a little disjointed. Yes, indeed. Stakelham the taker. Caught under pressure back there by Brian Finn. And the referee whistles for half-time. Tipperary forward line from Money Gall. He comes in, I think, in place of Ned Ryan. So the second half gets underway. Son making an honest effort to try and come to uh, early blanket of cloud overhead Ger Hagerty trying then to get Limerick's first point of the second half but uh, he's had no success whatsoever so far yes it's going to take time for Ger to settle into full forward if the selectors Limerick selectors are, are thinking of playing him there full time he might well be needed in midfield Joe O'Connor beaten for it by Declan Ryan Feeding it forward there towards Pat Fox. Linking up again with Declan Ryan. Experienced stagers linking together but failing to produce the score at the end of it all. Carmody with a neat catch in midfield. Beating Podrick Hogan. Feeding it inside towards Gary Kirby as Limerick for the first, look for the first score of the second half and Gary Kirby has got it. And there are now two between them again. 
Yes, an excellent score there, a good catch by Carmody, and he hit it in well, and the, the tip pulled back then were out about 20 yards, and it went in behind them. Good anticipation there by Gary Kirby. Joe O'Connor batting it down towards Anthony Carmody. Difficult to dispossess uh, Declan Ryan, however. Sean O'Shea, John Madden. This is uh, Jimmy O'Dwyer. First chance to shine in this second half. Up to Fox. And a second wide at the start of the half for Tipperary. Tommy Quaid. Tony O'Connell waits inside, being marked by Pa Carey. As Paul Delaney takes the sideline cut. Connor Stakelham takes a tumble over the legs of Joe O'Connor. Limerick are giving, are giving Tipperary too much room up there, and then um, you can't let O'Connor Stakelham, Pat Fox, and, and Declan Ryan plenty of space like that because they'll put the ball over the bar. They've been standing back somewhat. Connor Stakelham, the free taker, and that tips press point. So they go point for point uh, at the start of the second half, now just three minutes old. The Tipperary forwards are now moving. Euron Carey, beaten by Seamus O'Shea, is doing a manful job in there in the heart of the half-back line. On to Jimmy O'Dwyer, has looked lively so far. Pursued by Kieron Carey. Centre half-forward going way back into his own defence. Whipped out by Mike Houlihan, supported by Andy Garvey. And a race for possession, Mike Galligan, the one who gets there ahead of John Madden. O'Shea trying to go back, Chair Hagerty. Trying to take it round, Noel Sheehy fouled, and a free into Limerick. Jerry, can I just make one point there? Andy Garvey pulled him the ball out of defence. Michael Galligan doubled on it, and it went into Jer Hegarty, and it put the Tipperary man under terrible, terrible pressure. Now, if Limerick play like that, they will put Tipperary under pressure, put Tipperary make mistakes, and Limerick will score. But if they revert back to their style that they did prior to this, they're not going to score that easily. You're saying the Jack Charlton philosophy put them under pressure early on is the one to adapt here. I'm in, I'm in total agreement with Jack Charlton's style of play. Same with Kirby. Kerry Kirby, as we see, failed to convert. It remains Limerick 10 points, Tipperary 9. Joe Connor. Not able to get the ball very cleanly away, but just keeping it away from Declan Ryan. Podrick Hogan on to Aidan Ryan. Very rapid delivery from Ryan and over the bar. Simply executed by uh, Tipperary as always, and the side's tied up. Yeah, it's interesting that Tipperary are able to bring players in from their extended squad, from the junior team indeed, put on the Tipperary shirt, and suddenly they're playing like All-Ireland champions themselves. Yes, indeed. Galligan, whose mother hails from Tipperary, but he's hoping to engineer a Limerick win this afternoon. Seamus O'Shea out to the far side. And attention required in the self. He didn't protect it. Gary Kirby came in, connected with it, and uh, won the ball. Oh, I'd say his finger is gone. It looks. So the Kilkenny doctor, Frank Keating, then escorting Paul Delaney off, and they're already quite depleted. Out as far as Aidan Ryan. Tipperary linking up well. Hulham. Stopped by Declan Ryan, 65 metres out. Tip looking the classier of the two teams. And Declan Ryan emphasises that point with a beautifully struck shot from way out the field, a good 50 metres out. Declan Ryan's first score of the afternoon, but Tipperary go back in front. Please look in the face of Babs Keating. Anthony Carmody. Touching it down towards Kieran Carey, denied space, blocked by Podrick Hogan, whipped out by Damien Quinlan. Rail trying to press the ball forward there, missed by Seamus O'Shea. Ger Hegarty trying to get onto it, so to Aidan Ryan. And whereas other players endeavour to get the ball, Aidan Ryan invariably makes it his. That's uh, Mick Ryan.
Now Anthony Orioto. Carmody. Good spell this by Limerick as Shane Fitzgibbon turns it inside towards Ger Hagerty and they look for a goal. But denied the opportunity by Seamus O'Shea. Sails over the head of Anthony Carmody, runs on to Podrick Hogan. To his right, he's got Conor Stakelham. That's the pass, but it was hit in behind Stakelham. Fed forward towards Donny O'Connell. O'Connell can't hold it. Tommy Quaid with the backs holding out the forwards. Meanwhile, back in defence, it's Anthony O'Reardon still operating at right corner back. Now Gallagher against John Madden, who's allowed him a bit of latitude this afternoon. Gary Kirby pressed off by Donny Keeley. Out to Kieran Carey. Now, as Eamon was saying, operating in midfield. Control. Yes. Not uh, his uh, strong it, suit just now. Yes, it's it's great to see Kieran back, but he's, he's just not his, his self today. He's missing balls that he should be catching. Fotherick Hogan in towards Donny Keeley, and Sean Nealan trying to get on to it. Chance of a goal here. Fox. And it's stopped brilliantly in the end there by Tommy Quaid. That Actually, was a brilliant goal line save by Quaid. The shot by Fox. But they were really queuing up for the shot. And in the end, it's going to be a 65. Well, one of Conor Stakelham's six points so far came from a 65. This one in as far as the man playing on the 40. Supported here. And in the end, Jimmy O'Dwyer gets his own first point of the game. The sub introduced at half-time, seeking to make an impression, and as you see, putting two points between the teams. This just a moment ago, Eamon, yes, the double Donny, save coming Donny up. Panel, Sean Field, a good save by Tommy. He just, just got his hand to it, back out again. It comes to Pat Fox, he takes a shot, hops it along the ground, and Tommy brings off another great save. Sean Nealon to Declan Ryan. Low inside, stopped by Conrad Stakelham. Anthony O'Reardon tried to get it out there. In fact, it ended up being Mike Houlihan, supported by Anthony Carmody. Shape it's given now. He's got the legs. Nice turn of pace, this. Tried to go by Mick Ryan, stopped in the end by Seamus O'Shea. Comes out to Ger Hagerty. Turning, striking, Shane Fitzgibbon, oh, so near to being the opening goal. Wide across the face of the goal, and Pat Darwin just couldn't get the final touch. Damien Quinlan lifting the siege. So near to being the opening goal. It certainly lifted the spirits of the Limerick fans here at the Gaelic grounds. There's a tremendous bout of hurling there from Limerick, but unfortunately, Pat Darwin just missed it at the last second. It just fed across the face, the pace of the goal too fast for him. Mike Houlihan down to Ger Hegarty. They've got to move the ball in fast here. Hegarty pursued by Seamus O'Shea. Limerick needing a goal. Hegarty, can he supply it? Can he give the ammunition inside to Shane Fitzgibbon? Stopped by Mick Ryan. Pat Davron against Mick Ryan here. Limerick needing to turn this possession now into a score. Davron has put it over the bar. Comedy beaten by Declan Ryan. Very much the dominant force there in the half forward line, half back line exchanges. Donny Keeley stopped by Mike Gallagher. But Davern chased by John Madden and Donny Keeley. Looking a little bit tentative. Davern inside. Gary Kirby in there looking for possession. Beaten in the end by Noel Sheehy. Showing steely determination at fullback. Up towards Connor Stakelham getting there just ahead of Mike Houlihan. Houlihan going back old side and in the end Thomas Stakelham protests the decision of the linesman. Limerick's line ball. Stakelham. And passed outside with the two Ryans are waiting for it. Aiden the one who gets it. Declan available as well. Again, I think he was expecting Aidan Ryan to come forward to make an option for him. Kieran Carey across to Anthony Carmody inside the last 10 minutes. Shane Fitzgibbon is beaten for it by Damien Quinlan. He certainly is impressed since coming in for the injured Paul Delaney. Podrick Hogan now. You get the feeling that so many of Great the score. players have come in here to try and make an impression in the Tipperary colours this afternoon are really playing out of their skins. Hogan again, leaping but beaten in the air by Anthony Carmody. 
on to Ger Hegarty who now has drifted out around the half forward line Hegarty can he inspire them yet to get the scores that will matter a goal brilliantly scored by Gary Kirby it's come from Ger Hegarty to Gary Kirby first time whipping it over and in Limerick are in front and there's just eight minutes to go a brilliantly taken goal Hegarty the supplier but what a great piece of wrist work this was when it came in from Gary Kirby beautifully fed inside watch for the corner forward making a cross into the full forward position first time way in the corner Limerick leading by two points they must certainly turned about they've had a couple of good goal chances that's fed in by Mike Gallagher again in towards Gary Kirby Shane Fitzgibbon a second goal inside a minute and Limerick have taken the game by storm Fitzgibbon doing what he does so well a goal and a point now for Shane Fitzgibbon Kirby was in there tormenting as well the local fans quite delighted the match which has turned in Limerick's direction the points looked like they were heading for the All-Ireland Champions as Galligan fed it in beautifully watch as Gary Kirby was on hand so too Shane Fitzgibbon first it was touched away from the fingers of Noel Shee held off by Gary Kirby and first time in by Shane Fitzgibbon brilliant goal Kerry Carmody trying to pick the ball up stopped momentarily by Declan Ryan Joe O'Connor fed outside here for Galligan Keeley misses it Kirby still Gary Kirby looking for another point that's high and out's way sailing up and over the crossbar so now two clear goals separating the teams on my watch four and a half minutes to go Yes, indeed. A fast ball came in from the right half, back then into the forward line. Gary's first touch was poor, but fortunately got the ball and scored a very good point. Podrick Hogan across here. Kieran Carey should have done more with that. Without the stick, it's Aidan Ryan. On towards Jimmy O'Dwyer, beaten for it. Galligan again. The heart and the urgency now is being supplied by Limerick. Keeley into Declan Ryan nobody to pick him up to Donny Keeley or Donny O'Connell I should say the owners now on Tipperary to come back a bit of wrestling a little bit of arm pulling but uh, nothing too serious I think Joe Joe O'Connor threw up the ball and caught it but you're, you're not allowed to do and that's why the free is going in they're going for a goal here. Stakem is going for a goal. So let's see whether Conor Stakem can convert this one from about 25 meters out over the bar. He was going for a goal, as you suggest, probably top right-hand corner. But uh, Conor Stakem is going to have to be content with what I make as his seventh point of the day. So five points, the difference. It's all over, and the opening Royal Liver League match has gone Limerick's way. In the last seven or eight minutes, they began to come more and more into this match. And Gary Kirby with an overhead flick, which went in past Ken Hogan with the first goal. And that was followed up with a fine shot by Sh Shane Fitzgibbon. And so in the end, it's Limerick who take the two points. There's much to work on, as I'm sure Phil Bennis will be the first to admit. But against an understrength temporary side at the Gaelic grounds this afternoon, they produced their first win of the new league season on the opening day of the Royal Ivory season. But a final scoreline of Limerick, you were saying, well, this game would teach you something about the side that you had just inherited. What did it teach you? John, when I was Andrew the week there, we didn't know what to expect today. And uh, you'll see in Limerick's performance for the last couple of years. And uh, today, number one, I wanted to get the spirit and the jersey, the pride of the jersey. And well, I learned that, that I had it today from the time they left the dressing room. Definitely, we, we lacked maybe a little bit of skill here and there. And we weren't as fit as people early there here today. But we, we learned, though, we left them there for the hour. And maybe at times we were tempted to make but we didn't we left them there for the hour and we learned a good few things about the thing today well you won it there in the last five ten minutes or so with the two goals but before that you were struggling i would suggest and against a very depleted temporary team surely a limerick side which was near to being full strength should have done a lot better well i agree joe that um first half there we should have got in ahead maybe six or seven points we didn't we don't go ahead but uh temporary have a very strong panel and uh any name that stands for Tipperary there is all well known on the panel. There was a weed a few names that are not well known, maybe as some of the subs in Tipperary, there's wicked experience in their panel. But I'd agree with you that uh, we did play very bad there, uh, middle ways in the second half, or from the start of the second half to middle ways. 
And I would say that we weren't as fit as them was half of it. We weren't able to get to the ball as quick as them. Four or five of us fell into Ferrum yesterday as well, which didn't help us either as well. But I said the move of Jar Hegarty and uh, Gary Kirby, the Jar Hegarty out in the forward, made a big difference. Shane, it's two points, two points garnered, a good start to the league season. Yes, we're happy, Jar. Uh, we came here today to get two points to win uh, against Tipperary, and I think we've fulfilled that and we did our job. It was a long time there during the second half when it didn't look like it was going to be Limerick and we were wondering whether there were going to be major question marks about this team because you were against a very depleted Tipperary side. Sure, it was first and foremost we were against a depleted Tipperary uh, side. We were under pressure of court because of that to win and you know today was our first day out uh, under new management. We had to, we had to, we had to every one of us were looking to impress and um, yeah, it, during spells in the second half there we were under a lot of pressure. We weren't turning t terribly well and then we got the goals and that was it. Uh, we put them away at that stage. Well, goals can win any match. You might well have had one just before that. Uh, Pat Davern just couldn't apply the finish, but when they did come, they were good goals. Um, yeah, it was, it was important. They came at important times. That's what, that's what was most important. Um, you know, as you said, we were under pressure. We needed the scores. We got them, and we got the two points. Right, the first goal there was by Gary Kirby, a lovely overhead strike. He was involved as well in the build-up to the second one. He held off his man fairly well to leave you in. It is. His first goal was a great goal, which he doubled on and from the roof of the net. The second one was a ball that lobbed down between him and, and uh, Noor Sheehy and he broke it in front of him for me, which I ran on to, and I was looking up to it. Uh, I think it bobbled in front of Ken Hogan, in fact. Will this be the nucleus of the side that we'll see for the remainder of the league and maybe into next year's championship? Depending on the players, depending on ourselves, I'd say it will be, it will be the nucleus of them. I'd say we'll do, they will be better, and much better. I have no, I have no fears of them against Tipperary at their best, because I'd say Tipperary got a chance to play out a few players there as well that would probably make the Tipperary team. Limerick leading by two points. They must certainly turned about. They've had a couple of good goal chances. That's fed in by Mike Gallagher again. It was Gary Kirby. Shane Fitzgibbon, a second goal inside a minute.